buildings. This is Slater Mill proper. This is old Slater Mill, opened in 1793. Samuel Slater immigrated from England with all the secrets of the Arkwright water machine powers. And he opened this mill with basically less than a dozen children. And of course, since he had the secrets from England of these Arkwright water powered machines, there really was no competition, so the business grew rapid. Well, that's, that's why over here, he's known as the father of American industry, a title given to him by President Andrew yeah. Jackson. Andrew Jackson said, I, w, or I consider you the father of American manufacturers, and it stopped. Yes. Over in England, he's known as Slater the Traitor. So. I don't know how much will happen or if anything will happen, but after working here three years and two months, I'm convinced there's some presence or presence this year. Buildings are very old, they absorb memories, maybe, maybe the memories play themselves back, but it does seem responsive. Now, the oldest building on our site is the Sylvanus Brown House, known as the Brown House. That's 1758. That was moved a couple of times. It was over on the S-curve at one point where the highway is now. When the highway was put in so it wouldn't be demolished, it was moved over to this site where it's been since the new foundation was built in 1972. So that is the oldest building on our site. Very historic, very colonial. It's the second oldest house still existing in Pawtucket. And that's where Samuel Slater spent his first several nights uh, upon his arrival in Pawtucket, Rhode Island in January of 1790. That's right, as a guest of Sylvanus Brown. As a guest Brown. of Sylvanus Brown. Yes. And uh, how many people died in that house? Just about all of them, because until the mid-20th century, that's where people lived and spent most of their lives at home. So it did see a lot of family life and has a lot of history, a lot of stories to tell. So very, very historic building. Last September 19th, a uh, lady in the tour came up to me after the tour and said, I don't want you to think I'm prone to imaginings, but <laughs> I saw a little girl looking at me out of one of the gable windows, the left one, if you're in the back of the Sylvanus Brown Cottage, that's the only structure that wasn't originally on the site. And she said she looked down, looked up again, and the little girl was still looking at her, a little girl in old-fashioned clothing. I said it wasn't any of our staff here, was it? No, no, it was a little girl in old-fashioned clothes. I believe her because her bottom lip was trembling and she was pale complected when she was telling the story. It well, should be that, said that uh, since then there has been a mannequin placed there. Oh, yeah, so we should see a them. woman in antiquated <laughs> clothing, that's, that's a man. Uh, on Friday the 13th, March Friday the 13th, I told Lisa how we were down there with uh, the paranormal investigators. That's the name they grew from Long Island. I was downstairs with my friend Christian. Uh, he was there. He's a hardline realist if ever there was one. And we call him the Sherlock Holmes of paranormal investigation. And he loves to debunk. So we were down there with, with this group, and I was telling that story about how the little girl was seen looking out the window, right? As soon as I finished that story, we distinctly heard the giggle of a little girl just coming out of the air. Looked outside, there was nobody there. Then on Friday, April 17th, we were here with two groups, Rhode Island Paranormal Association and, Rhode Island, uh, and New England Paranormal Association. We were down in the Brown House with NEPA. Uh, it was uh, Dina and myself, my girlfriend Dina, who is quite sensitive, she receives well. Uh, she knew about the little girl there, the story. So she had brought a bouncy ball, and she was sitting on the children's bed in the brown cottage. She was bouncing the ball, saying, little girl, little girl, do you want to play? And she felt like she needed to cry suddenly. She held it back, but she felt overwhelmed with emotion. And the K2 meter I was holding suddenly started to flux wildly. And there's negligible charge there. There shouldn't be any electric current there, or almost none. And it started to bring it, and I could follow it. I went around, and there were five of us in there. We just did two, uh, three men, including myself, and two ladies. Two of them were police officers, and we clearly heard this little girl whispering, talking. Couldn't make out everything she was saying, but it was like, <laughs> you know, speaking to us. Uh, it came out in the audio recording on the digital recorder. Uh, so I asked the girls to go upstairs for two reasons. One, they seemed more receptive to this female spirit, this child spirit, we assume it is. They had, I gave Dina the K2 meter, and it was really spiking. It shouldn't do that. I've been up there with a K2 meter before and got next to no readings. Um, and Dina asked, what's your name, honey? And on the way home, Dina was saying, I kept feeling Rebecca, Rebecca. Well, when you listen to the auto recording, she says, what's your name, honey? So we're pretty sure that there is some type of child spirit, probably female, there. 
We kind of, I don't know, she's been hurt in different levels, but we think maybe she's up there. And what personnel have we here? You want to read all the names? Everybody slate your name, please. Carl Johnson. Lisa Duality. Alice Noble. Richard Palaszczuk. Ethan Mayer. And I'm Keith Johnson. Yeah. I was thinking of having Ed Warmer, Alice, and uh, speak to the spirit we expect is here if you want. If you want. In the, in the child's bedroom. I was expecting to turn into the child's bedroom. I mean, upstairs, bedroom. right? Oh, up there, down here, yeah. What do you say, Lisa? Do you want to go upstairs? Sure. Okay, but if you're going to be recording EVPs, then we have to be very quiet down here. Yes. Okay. Are you going to be mm -hmm. trying EVPs yeah. up there? Yes. All right. Okay, I'll lead you on. You put them in. Do you want to take the ammo? I have put two in this. Little coins there. The drawer. Nothing like the uh, points at these points. But it's something you can draw around and gauge. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready? Alright. Um, okay, guys, we'll be, you got the video camera? Alright, I'm going to bring them upstairs. Then once we're down here, we have to be very quiet. brought something, Alice, and I was showing Lisa. This is to play with a little girl if you want to play okay. with her. Okay, yep. Oh, all right. Oh, nice one. Okay. Keeping an eye on you. There you go. That's what Dina was using. All right. I find that a lot of the time when I get the EVPs, um, my biggest success rate has been when I kind of speak about the plays or we're having a conversation about things in the room, not asking a direct question, no, and like they that. interject. Yeah. I so find it's usually when I'm talking between correct. team members, you get the voices coming underneath. Correct. As if they can't help themselves. Correct. Like I find... They want to join in. Right. If yeah. I ask a direct question, a lot of times I don't get an answer. I don't get an answer. Right. And so, so I do ask because I'm courtesy. Uh, mm -hmm. I usually introduce myself and introduce the team. Because it's good to see. Mm -hmm. so there's mm -hmm. something there. And, and just so we know who's in the room. So we have yeah. Allison and Lisa in the bedroom upstairs. Um, we're sitting next to a fireplace. This is Tuesday evening, approximately 9.15 p.m. If there's anyone here that would like to speak with us um, or alongside us, please feel free to do so at any time. And I know why the little girl would love to play with the ball. Mm -hmm. I can't reach that. If you want to play with that, go ahead. You can give us a sign that you're here with us. Make it light up even, if you don't want to move it. Keith, did you want to ask any questions at this point, or remain silent? No, we'll remain silent. You know, keep in mind that the ladies are upstairs, Allison and Lisa are upstairs speaking. Allison put those coins there. She didn't go under. Hmm. Sometimes gets results. You can see the movement. I have. There's a little girl that might be going by the name of Rebecca in here. That used to live in here. If there is Rebecca here, would like to talk to us? Come a long way, different country, different place, different land. Is there anything you'd like to tell Allison about how things were when you grew up? Is there anything you'd like to tell Allison about how things were when you grew up?
my older little girl was very excited to find that I was coming here tonight. Her name is Jenna. Is there anything you'd like me to tell her? Her name is Jenna. Is there anything you'd like me to tell her? One of my best EVPs that I got was um, we're in a house in Athol, and uh, it was a suicide house. And we were trying to reenact this dragging sound that they kept hearing. And, you know, we were trying to drag different things furniture and whatnot, and we finally ended up dragging one of our members across the floor. And what you hear is me with my witchy cackle, you know, giggling. Yeah. And, I, and then just as, you know, we're not really concentrating on EVPs, we're just, you know, trying to get the sound right. That's when he decided to speak, and he spoke so clearly and so directly. It's probably one of the best EVPs I've ever heard. Yeah. And it's Beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful EVP. And did not get you excited when you find it? Oh, it's unbelievable. It's that immediate like, oh. Yeah. Just like, whoa. <laughs> Just me, Keith. It's Keith. It's Keith. Has entered the room. Are we all done? Uh, I Is that 15 minutes? Yeah. Yes, it's been yeah. exactly right. 15 minutes. If you feel you're done. And the reason I like to videotape all of it is because if you do get an EVP, I like to look back and just make sure you're doing something. Doing something. Yep. So at least you've got harder yep. evidence. Makes that, perfect sense. Yeah. So I basically have everything videotaped. Yep. For that reason, because then you can prove that hey, here we are. The man didn't move. Right. I didn't do that. Well, you didn't move your foot. So we're just discussing the best results that we've gotten with EVPs and the techniques that we've used. Mm -hmm. and, you know, sometimes direct questioning, but also conversation yes. around. Yeah. EVP session ending now. If you fall, you can fall. Okay. Me. Well. I think now we can move on to the Wilkinson Mill.